Hey, Chase. Good morning. Welcome to Grace. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you are here in this place of worship today. We welcome you here. We hope that you have felt welcome coming in, in to worship this morning um, on this beautiful Easter morning. Um, also hope you've received an order of worship on your way in the door. Um, as we like to remind ourselves each week, a life connected to God and a life connected to each other is the most meaningful life there is. And that is our goal. That is our hope. Um, that you experience in this place, connection to God and connection to one another so that our lives can become more of what God is calling our lives to be. Um, inside your order of worship, a few things would, I would like to announce. Um, this morning we had a sunrise service at 7 and then breakfast following and the food was amazing. So all of you who helped prepare and coordinate um, breakfast, we definitely give you a sincere thanks um, for your efforts there. Um, Next Sunday evening, we'll be having a joint worship service here at Grace for the uh, youth. Our youth in the community are coming together, um, so um, please encourage your youth to be a part of that. Uh, please take note of the adult night out coming up May 2nd. Um, Sunday, May 19th is our graduate recognition. We'll be uh, recognizing our um, high school graduates on Sunday, May 19th. Also, Sunday, May 19th, um, the Life Church and uh, Grace will be combining again for worship, and we'll be worshiping together um, here that day, so please keep that in mind. And then the last Sunday of May, we'll be having worship on the grounds um, at the pavilion behind the church, so uh, please keep that in mind. You'll hear more information coming up. Um, many of you may already know, uh, but one of our members has had um, a couple of seizures yesterday, and she is in the hospital um, now and be running some tests today and tomorrow. Um, MJ Biggerstaff um, had a seizure yesterday morning and then another one yesterday afternoon. And so um, the family has allowed me to share that information with the congregation and also ask that we be in prayer. Um, prayer for MJ, prayer for their entire family as they go through this together and prayer for the medical team as they try to figure out what's going on and what's causing the seizures. So with that said, um, we at Grace believe prayer is always the most we can do. It's never the least we can do. It's the most we can do. And um, at this time, we'd like to have a time of special prayer for MJ and John and their entire family. And uh, we also have a prayer blanket here that has been anointed with oil. That we will make sure MJ gets um, as soon as possible. So if we can, let's take a moment of, of prayer together um, and let us pray. God, in your grace and in your mercy, you hear our prayers. And in your might and in your power, you do amazing things. God, you answer prayer. And in this moment and this time, Lord, your church, your people are praying specifically for one of your own, one of your saints. We, we lift up MJ Biggerstaff to you. God, we pray that your hand of healing will be upon her. Lord, we pray that the seizures would stop. God, we pray that you would... Um, bring peace and comfort and reassurance to her and to her family. God, that you would give wisdom and knowledge and guidance to the medical team who's caring for her. And Lord, we, we thank you in advance for the work that you are doing and are going to do in this situation. And Lord, how it's going to be a testimony of how faithful you are. So God, we give you praise and glory for your healing power. And we pray your healing hand be upon her right now in this very moment. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I would invite you to stand with me this morning as we join together in affirming our faith. We do this each week with the Apostles' Creed, these words that have been passed down from generation to generation in the life of the church, these words reminding us the basics and the essentials of the Christian faith. Let us join together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
And at this time, we would ask that you remain standing. We are going to continue our worship and song this morning with the Easter medley. If you were at the morning, um, the early sunrise service, we also did this at that time. We'll start with at the cross, going to Old Rugged Cross, and end on there is a fountain. The words are on the screens um, over here to my left and my right. So just follow along with us. And let's continue in worship and song. begin by reading this poem that I found that's very fitting and then continue on to the prayer. A prayer for Easter. 
Lord, may our hearts experience afresh, afresh the awesome miracle of Easter, when death and sin were forever defeated by resurrection life. Glorious, ground-shaking, breathtaking, stone-rolling life. Hallelujah. Amen. As I continue to pray, Lord Jesus, please bless us as we come to you on this holiday, Lord, which is indeed worthy of celebration, Lord. Celebration of life. Let us learn, learn now to live life to the fullest, but with you as our guide, Lord to never lose sight of you, but forgive us for the times that we do. Bless every family that's represented here, Lord. Bless our pastor today as he brings us our sermon. And just help us to enjoy this day, Lord. And take, this, uh, take what we learn here today out into the world, Lord. And be your hands and feet in whatever way you ask us, Lord. Give us the strength and the humbleness and just to be respectful to everyone, Lord, and to always be looking for unique and powerful ways to uplift your name, Lord. And let us pray now as, our, as your disciples pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. A few weeks ago, we had something called confirmation. Confirmation for our um, sixth graders who were at the point was a time for them to confirm for themselves what the church confirmed for them at their baptism. So we talk about baptism and we talk about how baptism is initiation into the life of the church. And it's at baptism that we, the church and parents of the baby or the infant being baptized we declare this is God's child and we're going to do what we're supposed to do in pointing this child towards the love and grace of Jesus so as they grow older they themselves will reach a point where they can confirm for themselves that Christ is their savior so we had a, a great group of guys we had all guys six guys and uh, I'm going to ask those guys to come up now if they would. Um, just so you know, Andrew Biggerstaff was a part of that group, but he is not here with us today as he is with his family and his mom. But the rest of the guys would come up, Cohen and Aiden and Brody and Brady and Dylan. And in our few weeks together, we talked about a few things. One of the things we talked about is the Apostles' Creed. And why we say what we say every Sunday and what that means and what that means for us as individuals, what that means for us as a church. Uh, we talked about sin and salvation. We talked about the reality that every one of us are sinners. And if we're honest, sometimes sin just kind of comes easy. But we all need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. We also talked about baptism. I just gave you the Reader's Digest version of baptism. But we talked about baptism. We talked about Holy Communion, that when you come to this table, that Jesus, in some mysterious way through the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus meets you here at this table, and you are present with our Lord, and you find grace again at his table. And then we talked about church membership, because not only are these guys going to confirm their faith today that Jesus Christ is their Savior, they're going to be full members of this church. And I told them, I said, you might find yourself getting a call from me saying, hey, will you serve on this committee? You're a full member of the church now. You can do that. And I think it might be interesting to see some fresh brains, younger brains, on some of these committees. So, gentlemen, we talked about this. I would ask you two questions. You'd be up in front of a bunch of people staring at you and talking about how cute you look. And Brody, you can thank me later. Your mama wanted all y'all to have flowers, and I said, these guys probably don't want flowers. 
She said, but the mamas would. And I said, well, we ain't asking the mamas. So, fellas, first question I ask you is this. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? The second question, will you serve this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Welcome as full members of Grace United Methodist Church. Welcome more so that you confirm your faith in Jesus Christ. Church, show them some appreciation. While they're making their way back to their seats, if you would stand and welcome those around you. Welcome them to grace. More, wouldn't it though? What's up, Mark? Doing good.
and we'll continue standing as we continue worship. Um, we're going to sing Death Was Arrested.
may be seated. At this time, let us take this chance, this opportunity, this privilege, if you will, to continue worshiping God as we give back to God a portion of what is God's, God's tithe and our offering. And we remind ourselves this week, each week, the giving and the receiving that happens during worship in this specific time is, is an opportunity to, to give back. And in this giving back, we are making a difference in this community, in this state, in this nation, in this world. Lives are being impacted by Grace United Methodist Church and by how you give. It's happening. Lives are being changed. You heard five guys up here this morning say, yes to Jesus, he is my Savior. And that's what it's about. As I told them, that's the single most important decision you will ever make in your life. Everything after that is secondary. That is primary. And so that's what we are, as a church are doing. And your giving and the receiving in this place helps make that possible. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you are good. Almighty God, it's because of you that we are even here and awake this day. And God, all the things that we claim as our own, they have been given to us and allowed us to have by you. And so God, we give back to you now a portion of what is yours, your tithe and our offering. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would bless and multiply the giving and the receiving in this place. And we pray in advance, Lord God, for the lives that will be impacted and changed by the good news of Jesus. Thank you for using us, your church, to grow your kingdom in this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let's stand together as we present God's tithes and our offerings. You can be seated, and children can be dismissed for children's church at this time. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Sunday mornings. Whew. Sunday mornings at our house. I don't know about your house, but Sunday mornings at our house are crazy. It seems Sunday mornings are the hardest time to get out the door. Whoever sang the song Easy Like Sunday Morning obviously never try to get a family ready and out the door so that you could be to church on time. Maybe, just maybe, you feel like Amber and I have felt before and sometimes probably feel more often than not, uh, she more than me because I get here before she does, and I think that's part of my planning. But there have been times, again, more times than not, that you find yourself hollering and fussing you got to get out of the house, especially if you're trying to get kids ready, no matter if they are teenagers. they still hard to get out of the house to get to church. And you spend so much time hollering and fussing, by the time you get to church, you feel like, man, I need to be at church. In fact, I need to come to the altar before we even sing the first song because i got repenting to do. i got to get right because of all the hollering, hollering and fussing I've been doing. Or maybe, maybe you've been doing so much hollering and fussing, you sit in the parking lot and think, I'm not even sure I can go in. The place might burn down if I walk in. It's the whole attitude of, I was in a hurry to get here, but now I'm hesitant to go inside. I was in a hurry to get here, but I feel a little more comfortable just on the outside looking in. And this morning, if you had Easter Bunny festivities when you got up, that's just another added stressor to getting to church on time. Like on the outside looking in. Sometimes that's the most comfortable way to live. And if we're honest, on the outside looking in, Sometimes we can get convinced that's the most comfortable way to have faith in Jesus. So we can say we believe Jesus. We can say we believe in Jesus. But there's a big difference between believing Jesus, believing in Jesus, and then actively putting your trust in Jesus. Again, it's like we're content to be on the outside looking in. But here's what I want you to know today. It's your takeaway point, and it's real simple. Jesus is calling your name. Jesus is calling your name. Jesus is calling your name to be in relationship with him, to be in an active and trusting relationship with God through Jesus. It's like I've heard people say before when they find themselves going through difficult times. They say, if it weren't for Jesus, I don't know how I would get through this. 
Then they follow that right up with, if it weren't for a church family helping me get through this, I don't know how I would get through this. And they've learned to actively trust in Jesus for all things because they know since Jesus is alive, there's hope in every situation. Since Jesus is alive, there's even hope in death. Which is why the early church, especially Jesus' disciples in the early church, they weren't afraid to die. Because they had not seen a dead man get up. And they were not afraid to die. And so Jesus is calling your name today to be in an active and trusting relationship with him. And here's what we need to remember. The dead people don't call your name. Only life can speak life. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is calling your name today. So today what I want us to do is I want us to hear again a story. A story that many of us have maybe heard time and time and time again. Maybe it's a story that had you in a hurry to get here this morning because, hey, it is Easter Sunday. We're supposed to go to church on Easter, so I'm in a hurry to get there. But maybe, just maybe, you were in a hurry to get here and you were a little hesitant to really believe this story. That it's a whole lot easier to just be on the outside looking in. Maybe you're thinking to hear this story again, Jason, it's a good story, but dead people stay dead. And I said, would say, you're right, unless you're Jesus. Jesus is risen. And that's why we're in this place today. If Jesus had not risen, as Paul said, we would be the most pitiful people ever. But Jesus is alive, and Jesus is calling your name. So I invite you to hear again the Easter story. We'll be reading from John's account of the Easter story, the, the, the resurrection of Jesus. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 20. If you don't have a Bible, please feel free to follow along on the screen. John 20, beginning in verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, that's John, by the way, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Sometimes it's more comfortable to be on the outside looking in. But then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. John begins the account of Jesus being raised up. And he, John begins it by saying early in the morning. And he lets us know it was still dark. 
See, John is kind of funny in writing his gospel. John uses words and phrases that oftentimes have dual meanings. So one of those words being dark and the opposite being light. And when John uses these words, he's not just talking about a physical darkness or a physical light. He's oftentimes alluding to a whole lot more. So when John says here early in the morning while still dark, it's not just that the sun is not yet up. That's one meaning, but more than that, it's that there's still the darkness feeling of lost and sin. There's still the darkness feeling of Jesus is dead. There's still the darkness of Mary's there, but she still has no resurrected faith yet. And so Mary makes her way to the tomb, and she comes to the tomb, and she sees that the stone has been rolled away. She was in a hurry to get there, but she was hesitant to go in. Did you, did you catch that in the story? She got there and saw the tomb, uh, the tomb open, and she never went in. She never did. She just saw the stone rolled away, and she jumped to conclusions. As she's on the outside looking in, she jumped to conclusions and said, Somebody's taking the body of Jesus. She saw the stone move, and so she took off. She ran to tell Peter and John, and she got there, and she said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. But again, Mary had not actually seen the empty tomb. She was just making an assumption. Based on the fact that the stone had been moved out of the way, she was on the outside looking in. So John tells us that Peter and himself, they took off for the tomb. They were, they were running to get there. And here's the deal. They were not going to verify Jesus' resurrection. They were going to verify that his body was gone. And they too, especially John, they were in a hurry to get there. I mean, John got there first, in a hurry to get there, but hesitant to go in. John tells us that when he got there, he just bent down and looked inside. He's on the outside looking in. Peter got there. If you know anything about Peter, Peter's like a bull in a china shop. I mean, he's just everywhere. Peter got there, and Peter went into the tomb to see for himself. And then John later went in. He saw the linen cloths there. He believed Jesus was gone, but he couldn't make sense of it. He didn't quite understand it all. And Peter and John went home. They went home not necessarily thinking that Jesus had been resurrected. They just went home seeing for re reality for a fact that he was not there. They went home. And in reality, they were still in the dark on their resurrected faith of Jesus. They just went home. See, and the challenge for us today as we leave this place is not to just go home. The challenge for us today is to go home believing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That he is alive. But more than that, Jesus is calling your name. Peter and John went home. But Mary stayed. Mary still hadn't even gone into the tomb yet. She's still on the outside looking in. Mary was in a hurry to get there, but hesitant to go inside. John tells us that when Mary was standing outside the tomb, she was crying, and, and then she began to bend over and look inside the tomb. And when she did that, she saw two angels. These two angels asked her, they said, Mary, why are you crying? And she's still convinced. Somebody's taken away my Lord. I don't know where they've laid him. And then the story hits its climax. As Mary is still there in the darkness of no resurrection faith, she believes the body of Jesus has been taken away, and she's, she's on the outside looking in, and Mary turns around. And we don't know why Mary turns around, but Mary turns around. Maybe, maybe Mary heard something move behind her. Maybe something caught her eye. Maybe, just maybe, those angels sitting there pointed as she was trying to figure out what's happened to the one that was laying here. But for whatever reason, Mary turned around, and there was Jesus. And for some reason that John doesn't tell us, but for some reason, Mary did not recognize Jesus. And even when Jesus asked her, why are you crying, who are you looking for, she didn't even recognize his voice then. 
she thought Jesus was the gardener, so she's again asking this question, where have you taken this one that was in the tomb? And Mary turned back, and she's looking at the tomb. But then something happens. She had heard Jesus speak previously, but she hadn't heard something very specific. See, John tells us something significant of how Mary came to know Jesus was there and Jesus was alive. It's when Jesus uttered only one word, and that one word was her name. Jesus' resurrection and the confirmation that Jesus was raised up was believed by one word, Mary. We can say Mary was the first convert. Mary really was the first preacher of the resurrection faith because she went back and she said, I have seen the Lord. And she told him all what he had said. And it all happened when Jesus said, Mary. See, some of us today may be on the outside looking in on our faith with Jesus. But Jesus is calling your name to be in relationship with him. And I pray today that if you're not in relationship with Jesus, that you will hear him calling your name. See, Jesus then began to tell Mary where he was going. He said, I'm going to my father and your father. I'm going to my God and to your God. See, Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And maybe you're thinking, so what, Jason? Here's another Easter sermon, another time I hear this story. But here's the deal. Easter faith is a whole lot more than Jesus was resuscitated. It wasn't that God went clear, and Jesus rose back up. That ain't it. Jesus was dead. He was graveyard dead. But he was rose from the grave. See, Easter faith means Jesus got up. Easter faith means God's divine purposes have taken place. Easter faith means sin and death are both defeated forever. And Jesus is calling your name. Jesus is calling you to love like him. Jesus is calling you to live like him. Jesus is calling you to follow after him. Jesus is calling you to forgive like him. And so when we hear our name of the lip, on the lips of Jesus, when we hear Jesus call our name, that's when the resurrection become, becomes not just a story, that's when the resurrection becomes our story. When you hear Jesus calling your name. When you hear Jesus calling you out of the things that have been holding you back. When you hear Jesus calling you out of sin. When you hear Jesus calling you into life, that's when the resurrection becomes your story. So what about you today? Were you in a hurry to get here, but hesitant to come in? In a hurry to get to church, to be present in the building, but not be engaged in worship? To come to sing some songs, to go home and think, now what? To do that we would be like Peter and John, to be in a hurry to get there. And then just go home saying, now what? What about you today? Are you hesitant to believe in the hope of Easter? Are you hesitant to put, actively put your faith and trust in the one who's conquered death? Like I said earlier, the dead can't call your name. Only life can speak life. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is risen and Jesus is calling your name. So you may be thinking, well, how is Jesus calling my name? Here, here are a few examples. Jesus is calling your name out of the grave. He is calling your name out of the grave of unbelief. He's calling your name out of the grave of sin. He's calling your name out of the grave of lust. He's calling your name out of the grave of bitterness. He's calling your name out of the grave of racism. He's calling your name out of the grave of addiction. He's calling your name out of the grave of greed. He's calling your name out of the grave of comparing yourself to others. Look to Jesus and get your worth from him, not somebody else. He's calling your name out of the grave of abuse. He's calling your name out of the grave of unforgiveness. He's calling your name out of the grave of selfishness. Jesus is calling your name to a life far beyond that you could ever imagine, but a life that you can only find in relationship with Jesus Christ. He is calling your name. And you will never understand resurrection faith until you answer that call. Until you say, Lord, I want you to be my Lord. 
That's what Easter faith is about. And Easter faith is believing that in all things there is hope. As we said many years ago, when I try to remind myself and us as much as possible, resurrection means the worst thing is never the last thing. I don't know where you're putting your trust today. You might be on the outside looking in on this whole faith with Jesus thing. But I know Jesus is calling your name to be in relationship with him. And he's calling your name out of whatever graves we are in. He is calling your name. Will you trust him? Remember the night that Jesus sat with his disciples. It was on that night that he took bread. He lifted it up to God. He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. When the meal was over, he took the cup. He lifted it up to God. He gave thanks to God. Then he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often, and as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So today... It's in remembrance of the mighty acts of Jesus that we are in this place. And it's our belief, it's our knowing, that through the work of the Holy Spirit, that you will make this bread and this wine be for us the body and the blood of Christ, so that we, your church, may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, to be sent out into the world to share the good news that Jesus is alive and that Jesus is calling everybody's name to come to him so that we may have life life abundant and life eternal amen a word of invitation and a word of instruction the invitation is this christ our lord invites you to his table no matter who you are no matter what you've done jesus invites you here because we do believe that you will meet jesus here in some mysterious way by the work of his holy spirit And you will find his grace and his forgiveness fresh and new at this table as you receive the bread and the wine. A word of instruction is that there will be a servant station at each section of chairs. If you would exit from your left, if you will come with open hands. We come with open hands because we have nothing else to offer but just who we are. And that's all Jesus wants is you. That's why he's calling your name. And we come with open hands because we receive. We don't take the body of Christ. He freely gives it. We receive it. Take the bread, then dip it into the cup. Place the bread into your mouth. You may circle back to your seat, or you may stop at the altar for prayer. At this time, if my servers would please come.
the ground Love is the power Where my freedom song is found Shame is a prison As cruel as the grave Shame is a robber And he's come to take my name Love is my redeemer
in a grave I'm walking to If you walked out of the grave I'm walking to If you walked out of the grave I'm walking to If you walked out of the grave I'm walking to If you walked out of the grave service, little Weston gave me a rock. I said, what's this, buddy? He said, the tomb is empty. The rock has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Church, Jesus is alive. Not only is he alive, he lives in us, and he calls us to go out into this world and share that life. And we share that life through the how we love God and love others. So let us go out in the life of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join hands together.